Welcome to the Biz Coach Show. In every episode, we share information and advice for small business owners, small business leaders, startups, and entrepreneurs preparing to launch their business. Our mission is to give entrepreneurs the edge they need to succeed. If you're in need of business coaching, head over to mybizcoaches.co and book your free coaching consultation today. Your host is Eric Whitmoyer, owner of My Biz Coaches. Eric is a business coach, serial entrepreneur, author, and speaker. Eric is passionate about sharing his knowledge and insights with small business owners so they can transform their businesses and achieve peak success. Well, Eric, as always, it is great to be with you today. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent, David, and yourself? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, thanks for Excellent. asking. Appreciate it. So, well, hey, uh, we've got another fun show. We did uh, one of these, uh, what was it, two, three weeks ago, I think, uh, one of these unscripted episodes and got some positive feedback on it. So I thought we'd try it again today. And uh, if you want uh, information, right, tips, advice for small business, if that uh, appeals to you, make sure you subscribe. And uh, if you like this format, uh, definitely let us know, send us a note, uh, leave a comment, and uh, we always appreciate the feedback and engaging with our community. So Eric, we're talking time management. Um, as you and I were preparing for uh, our conversation today, this is something that uh, you and I are, uh, of course, passionate about. And we've uh, done some uh, presenting on you, you actually reference a lot of these techniques in your book as well around goal setting. So I know something that you live, eat, and breathe, and also coach and uh, work with people on as well. So I'm sure you've got uh, some good information uh, if we have uh, enough time to get through it all. Right, we manage our time today. So. Uh, but let's let's maybe start with um, you know I guess maybe the very beginning is uh, is this a big problem, right? And, and right, our audience, small business owners, do you encounter a lot of small business owners that struggle with time management? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's uh, I'm trying to think of the right term for that. But, yeah, that's uh, a misnomer, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely a major problem. I mean, it creeps into my business on a regular basis. Right. So the um, uh, yeah, the, the, a, a simple sample size. I am on a, what we call a network mastermind group. And uh, last week, literally two weeks ago, I, I was at the I was in the group and I mentioned I a topic. I said, you know, if you know of anybody who's trying to juggle the balance, uh, having a, a, a business and, uh, you know, their personal obligations and they're, they're struggling with all the, you know, day-to-day -day responsibilities of running a business while, you know, being a parent and being a spouse and, you know, whatever other obligations we have yeah. in our lives, um, then I'd be happy to talk to them because that's one of the things we, we spend time on with our clients and everybody in the room, uh, you know, with their head down, was kind of like, yeah, I'm in that group, right? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, and, and literally everybody in the room said, yes, wow. I could use some help with that. So, I, I mean, that's small sample of 11 people, but everybody at the table said yes. So yeah. I'm, I'm guessing, generally speaking, most everybody who's self-employed would say that. I know that um, as an executive, um, you know, over the years in in in, in the wireless industry, I certainly struggled with it early on when I was younger. Uh, I think the one thing that's different about uh, when you have an established role within an organization and you have clearly defined expectations or at least relatively well-defined expectations, yeah. it makes it easier because I definitely would say the latter half of my career, I was able to control my time substantially better than I have been able to do as a business owner. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that as a small business owner, there are so many things that need to be done all the time and you don't necessarily have all the resources. Right. That yeah. You had when you worked at a bigger company with other, you know, um, other people to help. And so consequently, you know, it, it tends to affect your ability to, um, to, to get to delegate and do some of the things that when you were when you were working for a company and you had those resources, you obviously it was easier to balance those things out. And I think that's a, a factor that when you become self-employed, having been and if you never had that experience and you start a business and you've been an entrepreneur your whole life, you don't even know what you're missing because right. <laughs> you have no idea what, yeah. what it looks like to have an, an organized uh, you know, structure. But yeah. um, so anyway, I, I think there's a lot of people that struggle with it on a regular basis. I know that was one of the big things that we used to coach our employees on. Yeah. Right. Uh, the top producing salespeople typically had better time management skills generally yeah. than the vast majority of everybody else. Anybody who is in a uh, sales director role, yourself as a director, um, those who 
had better time management skills, had better life balance, and consequently performed better and didn't seem to be under duress all the time and, and missing <laughs> yeah. deadlines and things like that. And those who didn't were the ones that were constantly having those challenging conversations with and having to discuss whether or not this is the right fit for them because they can't right. seem to adapt. Yeah. No, I think obviously all really good points and, and very relevant. I think what's challenging or why I think a lot of people struggle with time management is there's usually not a silver bullet, right? There's no, you know, just do this and you'll be fine yeah. because it, it's yeah. different based on your role, you know, the, the nature of work that you do, even right. As you're talking, as you climb the ranks within an organization, or if you're a business owner, as your business grows and scales, there's new challenges, new things, right. And you're always having to adapt. And so there's certainly some foundational tactics. There's some, you know, um, theory, some concepts, things you can employ that are, are fairly timeless, but how you implement those um, really is kind of art and science. And you really have to you know, kind of dial it in and figure out what works for you in the role you're in right now. Right. Yeah. I, and, and that's exactly what I was just going to say, because to your point, it is what works for you yeah. in your current environment, because what yeah. worked in my, my previous environment doesn't necessarily work the same. Now, there's a handful of things that I've been able to transfer over, but direct, uh, direct, conf uh, like um, exactly the same. No, not even close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just it's, it's, many other things. Yeah, and you, and you see that delineation. I mean, uh, even sometimes technologically, right? Because there's some people that are amazing at time management. And it's all paper, you, you know, yeah. physical planner, notebook. Right. I've seen people that are great. It's just a legal pad. That's all they yep. use, and somehow it works just fine. And then you have other right. people that. If it's not, you know, a push notification on their phone, a reminder, a digital calendar, they're completely lost, right? And so yeah. it's finding not even the strategy, but even sometimes even the technology or the tool that is going to help you achieve it. Yeah, and and I think, well, I, I would suggest, and this is, uh, you and I have had numerous conversations about this. I would suggest that today's a day and age, uh, for most people, it's going to be a combination of the two. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. to your point earlier, there's tried and true strategies and concepts that really help. For instance, um, recognition, reminding, remind, uh, reminding yourself of certain things. Yeah. Um, what, what's the what's the when you write things down, the likelihood of remembering certain things is substantially mm -hmm. higher. I don't remember this. Yeah. Yeah, you, you probably know it better than I do. But uh, and so I've always been a proponent of writing things down. Yeah. Uh, and as you know, I journaled for a better part of my career yeah. and I would, uh, I, I will tell you, I literally, you can, well, you can see them they're right down there. <laughs> yeah, those are, those are years worth of journals. That's two shelves deep. And I have two more shelves in another cabinet on the other side of the room. And, uh, those are, those are the most, uh, those are probably the last couple of years that I was with, uh, our, our previous company. And, uh, that was a, you know, I wrote everything in the journal and I kept track of it, but, um, I recently moved to the uh, Remarkable, yep. uh, as we so talked about. Right? <laughs> a little plug there. We should get a. We should get a. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so we should get them as a sponsor. But right. uh, yeah, so we. I recently got the uh, Remarkable, and I will tell you immediately one because the handwriting recognition is solid. I mean, it yeah. is exceptional. Uh, but more importantly, I can actually title and categorize and tag all those notes. Yep. So that I'm not flipping through pages to find what I want, but I have the added advantage of handwriting those things down and getting it into muscle memory. So I, ironically, it's a it's a pretty useful tool. But um, as it relates to time management, um, one of the things I've been good about is keeping things in my head, and I've always had that added advantage. But when I wrote it down, then it, it committed it to memory even more so. So it's you know again, it's it's those tools talking about those tools what works for you. And that's, that's, this is a tool I've been looking for for years. Yeah. Uh, and just finally <laughs> bit the bullet and went ahead and got one. So, yeah, no, I think, and in, in, I know you and I both, um, our approach on this is very similar. So I'm sure this will resonate with you, but when most people say time management, what they really mean is priority management, right. And prioritization. And, and, and they often conflate the two, but I think what you're talking about is almost a step before prioritization which is you have to capture everything that comes into your world, right? To even know right. what your priorities are. And that's where people, even, even that first step gets missed because you know they don't, they don't see an email, they're not organized, right? And there's other 
things that kind of factor into time management you wouldn't normally think of. But one of them is just, you know, capturing it down on a remarkable piece of paper, you know, keeping a running list of to do's or, you know, follow up. Right. Those little things um, actually allow you to be more effective in the long run and manage your time and priorities more effectively. But really, that capture component you're talking about is almost as vital as knowing what to prioritize and when to work on it. Absolutely. And I would even go one step further to your point in, in the end of my book uh, in Success with Goals. What I specifically said was, OK, now I've given you the 10 steps how to successfully put your goals together. Yeah. Now what you need to do is convert what break this down into what is your what are the necessary steps that you need to do over the next one year, uh, you know, nine months, six months, three months, one month, one week. Right. And then what do I need to do today? Yeah. And those those what we refer to as the rule of five, those five things that you need to do today to move you towards that is what you put in your daily activity tracker, whatever right. that is, whatever your yep. tool is, whether it's that legal pad that I'm using or it's my journal or it's my remarkable or it's my phone where I put in my daily re reminders, whatever it is. But that's where I put those five things that I do every day. And those are, to your point, the priorities that I'm focused on. Right. Yeah. Because the, it, it, to your point, it, it is it is not about getting everything done. And I've read that in a number of time management books and and we put it in, in all our time management presentations as not what it's not getting everything done. It's getting the most important things done first. Right. Yeah. When you get the most important things done first, then you, typically you you're you're in a, in a position where you're you're leading with the um, what I want to say, you're um, proactively making decisions as opposed to reactively making decisions, which is. Right. As we get into the time management component, that's one of the biggest setbacks is when you uh, wait till the last minute and you're forced to make less than desirable decisions as opposed to proactively deciding this is what I'm going to do and allocating time for it accordingly when it makes sense for me as opposed to I don't have a choice. I'm pulling an all nighter because yeah. I have to you know, prepare for this event that I didn't prepare for. Yeah, no, you're, you're totally right. And I think you know, what, what comes to mind as you're saying that is it's the old trap of busy versus productive, right? And I know that's yeah. something we, we both talk about is, you know, I've, I've been there, I know you've been there where it's like, man, I, I was super busy today, you know, I was doing this, this, and you look back and you're like, I didn't get any closer toward my goals. I didn't, yeah. you know, do the things that were most important. Like I was really busy. I got a lot of stuff done. It wasn't the stuff that mattered. And, and that's really a trap that people fall into. And, and when people are saying, you know, I wish I had more time or I wish I managed my time better, it's you got to focus on the right things. You need to identify what those things are, which is covered in your book, which you probably put a link to your book. We keep talking about it. And we haven't we've never actually never done a, an episode diving into your book. So we should probably do that, too. We we put in the intro, but uh, we should probably dive a little deeper into goals and some of that on uh, a future episode. So I'll make a I'll make a note of that and we'll uh, we'll schedule that. But um, but yeah, no, that's uh, I think something that's important, right, is what what are the actions that are taking you closer to your goal? And I think as a business owner, so much more important because there are so many other things, so many fires that you have to deal with and so many little things that happen and you wear so many different hats that it becomes even more imperative that you have that focus so you can be productive and not just busy. Yeah. Uh, and and, and the, the, as you're even saying that, and I'm thinking through like some of the key things that I was able to accomplish while I was an executive with that previous company. For instance, I had a period of time where I'd lost like 60 pounds, if you remember. I do. Yeah. In, 2012. Yeah. And so I, I lost 60 pounds. I, I, I um, so I was working out literally uh, six days a week, uh, sometimes seven days a week, uh, at least some version of cardio or something like that. But I was doing that. That was taking easily 60 to 90 minutes a day. In addition to that, it was at the same time I was actually writing a book. And so I was actually um, typically about 90 minutes a day. So for me to be able to get both 90 minutes of workout time and 90 minutes of writing in the book while holding down my full-time job yeah, and often having a side business project on the side. Right. You know, my day started at four o'clock. And you probably yeah. remember for about two years straight, I got up every day at four o'clock to get up and, and start my routine of, of read, writing in the book. And so I would do that for at least 60 to as much as 90, sometimes two hours. And then from there, I go do my workout. And then from there, I go shower, get ready, and then go do my day job. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, and then so just to give people some perspective, um, even in my day job, because we did retail, my my primary focus was in the stores, visiting locations. And so while I'm in the stores, 
I'm not following up on email. So I would take an hour in the morning and do my, all my email that needed to be done. And then I didn't go back to it outside of using it from my phone, maybe when I was not in indebted with other responsibilities. But I only checked my email once a day. And I specifically had a reminder on there telling people, don't expect me to follow up with you on an email. If you need me, call me or text me. Yeah. Yep. Right. And, you know, and, and, but it, the whole point was, is that by allocating my time for those specific t tasks and responsibilities, I was um, chunking things into certain categories. And then I only did it during that period of time. I didn't try and do it the rest of the day. And that allowed me to allocate the appropriate time for the other things that were, in my eyes, more important. Yeah. When I was in the stores, when I was engaged with the employees, I needed to be able to give them that face time. And I needed to be completely focused on what they were doing and, and helping them progress and giving them coaching and guidance. And then as the day would wind down and I'd start to lose my focus, my mental focus, I'd kind of convert to very low, um, uh, um, low mental activities yeah. at, where it's just more of a social engagement. And, and so all the important things were done first thing in the morning uh, because I knew by two or three o'clock in the day with all the uh, all the things, all the fires you're putting out and everything like that, uh, by three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm starting to wind down and I'm just not there anymore at that point. Yeah. Well, and I, I want to breeze over because you mentioned three really important tactics that I hope everybody picked up on. One of them was um, you, you're not just going to find pockets of time in your calendar. I mean, sometimes you yeah. get little windows, you know, 10 minutes here, whatever, but you know, for big stuff, important stuff, you, you have to find the time, you have to schedule the time and block the time out, right. To be able to do the things that you need to. And I, then, would, you know, I would go so far as to say, create the time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah I yeah. Would agree. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think one other thing that is important, right, is, is the level of discipline, right? I, I saw you live through that and, and know that that was, uh, there were probably days you didn't feel like it, but you did it anyway. Right? And, and you were disciplined that, OK, when that time block is over, I'll move on to the next thing. And oftentimes people get trapped in, you know, uh, well, you know, I, I can probably shift this and move that. And I'll get to that later so I can spend a little more time. And, and they're not disciplined when they set those boundaries on their time for themselves. So that that was another big thing that you mentioned. And then I think the other thing is, um, you know, this is something I, I look at. It's, it's a whole nother aspect of it, but understanding your own energy and focus cycle, right? And right? Scheduling the work when you have, you know, the right focus or the right energy, and they're not always at the same time to do that project, right? If you do all of your high functioning work, when you have your lowest energy and the least focus, you're not going to be very effective with it. So it's important to understand that as well. So you, in that little example you gave, there were so many little nuggets I want to extract out for people. No, I appreciate that. That's good. Uh, good discipline on your part, just to pull that out. And and to your point, it was it was not. I didn't start out and say I'm just going to do it this way. It was like over a period of time, I'm like, okay, well, first I'm started this project, and then I'm like, okay, well, I've got to do this project, so I'm gonna, you know, like I started backing up my my wake up time. I, you know, yeah. originally we'd get up at six, then I started getting up at five, then I eventually had to start getting up at four to have the extra time. And at that time, my kids were teenagers, mid teens. And yeah. so they were still in the house. And as soon as they got up, by the time they got up at 7, 7.30 in the morning or whatever to do what they needed to do, it, the house is bustling now. The wife's up. The kids are up. You know, there's other things going on in the house. And I, if I haven't done those activities that I don't want to be interrupted, there's no way it gets done. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that that's I think it's another thing that people have a tendency to forget is it time management is getting the priorities done first. And often you have to you have to be really protective of that time. If you, yeah. if, if these are big projects for you, important projects for you, you really need to protect that time and you got to do it when nobody else is around. You can't even, if you can go into the office and you can be two hours earlier than everybody else, I guarantee you're in the top 10% of productive, most productive people in the company. Yeah. Because, because yeah. Yeah, yeah, nobody there to interrupt you. Yeah. Right. And so if you work in an office environment, which not many people do that anymore, but if you do, <laughs> yeah. so if you work from home, that's you have the same challenge. You just have yeah. different people pulling for your right. time, right? It's it's the wife and the kids and and you know whatever your situation is, but you have other obligations, and that's actually part of the challenge too. Is is how you have to protect your time, and, yeah. and it's you know it's it, we I hear it all the time now, and the older I get, the more it resonates with me. Time is the one asset you can't get back, right? Right, and so you know money comes and it goes, but time, it just keeps ticking out. And, and you have a bank and the bank is only so long, you have 1,440 minutes every day to get the most value you can out of every day. 
And if you don't, you've lost that 1,440 minutes. Yeah. I mean, we could go quantum physics on time. For, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah for, there for there may be some marbles. flexibility there, but it requires gravity. And, and for all cool. those marble followers out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quantum realm. I mean, you know, if we, if we want to get really into it, we could. But that is probably <laughs> another episode. But. That's funny. Uh, but no, I think, um, yeah, really, really great points. And uh, I think it's, it is important to acknowledge that if, if you don't own your schedule, right, you're, you're never going to be able to achieve the things that you want to, or it's going to take no. you so much longer. And, and one of the things I hear a lot is, Hey, look, I just, I'm looking at my calendar. I just, I can't, I can't fit any more in right now. And, and one of the things I say to that, and you may have a different uh, perspective on it, is okay, cool. This week, yeah, it probably is full. Go out two weeks, still probably full. Go out three weeks, starts to get a little lighter. Four weeks, a little lighter. Five. You go five, six weeks out, your schedule for most people is, is fairly open. And, and so it's like, hey, let's let's start at least six weeks from now, right? And, and if you look at your calendar, you schedule your priorities then. We know that by the time we get there, we're going to make little incremental improvements along the way. But at least when you get there, now we're going to be operating on our, our ideal schedule and we're scheduling our priorities instead of uh, scheduling our priorities around everything else, right? And so you may not have to go six weeks out, but some some version of that, right? It's 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 the you know if I can't do it today, then I'll never be able to do it. And it kind of becomes a defeatist mentality versus well, let's let's fast forward a little bit and find right. when you can do it, and then let's make incremental improvements until we're actually executing the time the way that we need to. Absolutely, yeah, it's a great point, and and I would uh, I, I would say that that's you know projecting out and saying, okay, four, six weeks, whatever it is it takes to free up your schedule enough to put those big, what you call them, big rocks, right? Yep. The yep. big rocks, the big responsibilities, the big obligations, putting those into your calendar and then, and then planning them. Like I'm, my, my most favorite tool. I mean, it's funny because I know over the years we've had people, they challenge us and we like, uh, you should use a Google calendar. You should use yep. this calendar, you know, whatever. Right. At the end of the day, use a calendar. That's my yep. first yep. point. Right. Um, but I was so adept with, uh, outlook as my calendar, because that was predominantly what we used in my entire career. Yeah. Uh, but everything got planned in my calendar, including my quality time with my, my wife, uh, quality time with the kids, because then I, I blocked that time out. Right. And, and, and in my head, that's like logically that just makes it, and, and yes, I'm an, I'm a logical person, so it makes more sense to me, but you know, it's like, okay, this is my time for this. And this is yeah. blocked out in my head. Um, and yeah, you push it from time to time, like you said, but the key is the discipline to make that transition, but it also allowed me to, okay, because I got all my work done when I'm with the family, I'm not thinking about what I should have been doing at work. Right. Yep. Right. And when I'm at work, I'm not thinking about how I let my family down because I wasn't there with them when I spent the weekend with them because I was so worried and focused on work. Yeah. Right. I did. And I've always had a discipline of being up uh, probably two hours before anybody else in the house at minimum, just so even when we were on vacation, I could knock out an hour or two worth of work on because I never really had just a job. I always had a job that required me to have a lot of responsibility. But in right, addition right. to that, as you know, I often had a lot of side businesses. I mean, we, yeah. I've had 14 different businesses over 30 years, yeah. many of them for multiple years while having a full-time job. So to manage all of that, you need to carve out that time and make sure that those things are getting done. And, and you know, I, I would openly admit that I still never probably did them as well as I would have liked. But I can imagine how poorly it would have been done if I wasn't as disciplined with my time management. Yeah. And I think that's, there's such an important lesson in that of you, you may never be as perfect as time management a, as you want, but you can always be better than you are. And, and I think yep. that's true of so many things, it, almost a, a mantra that, that it's like, you're never gonna be perfect, but you can always be better. Right. And, and that's so true of time management. It's like, if you're always finding ways to get a little bit more done or, and we talked delegation a couple of weeks ago, but right. So delegate stuff. So that's another way to get more done, but, but always looking for, how can I maximize the time that I'm doing on the things that give me the best return? And that's just a, an approach to life and business that just makes sense, right? Right, absolutely. And and you mentioned it earlier, the, the reason this is so important, not just for your average professional, uh, but the, particularly the small business owner, because there's so many things pulling on their 
yeah. uh, on their attention, right? On a day in and day out basis, let alone all the personal obligations you have, but just in your business, because there's not any one thing. It's not like you just do sales. Yeah. It's not like you're just the, the, the accountant. It's not like you're just, you literally you're overseeing all of these functions and trying to tie them all together. And if you have employees, you're kind of make you're kind of making sure that they're all engaging you know, yeah. at the right levels and everything like that. So there's so many things that you're touching on a regular basis that if you're not um, good at um, uh, putting those in categories, chunking out those times to focus on, like once a week, you should review your finances. Right. Um, once once a week, you should be reviewing your sales process. Right. Once a week, you should, whatever, right? Your sales data, your marketing data, whatever. But you should be reviewing all that stuff and you should have the discipline of blocking those things out so that you're, familiar with what's going on and you're not blindsided by things. That's a, I think yeah. that's another thing I see a lot of business owners make that mistake of, of allowing that to happen yeah. because they don't, it's like, I don't really like that part of the business. So I avoid it. Well, that's yeah. actually part of the problem then. Well, and it's, it's funny as you're saying that Eric, I'm thinking that time management is not very glamorous. It's not very sexy. You no. know, it's yeah. like, I mean, there, there's, there's weeks for me that when I'm most dialed in with my time management are crazy boring, but I'm getting so much done and it's the right stuff, right? Where it's, it's, it's every Wednesday at 10, I do this one thing every Thursday mm -hmm. at two, I do this one thing. And you have a number of those things and you just execute like clockwork, but those are things that pay dividends. Right. And so um, yeah, it's funny as you're saying that I'm thinking about like, yeah, you know what? Sometimes it is really boring to be that disciplined, but guess what? It's effective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and I, um, I'm trying to remember who I, who there was, a um, uh, some guru said something like that. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but, um, the being disciplined is boring. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to completely bastardize this now, but it was basically being, uh, being disciplined is boring, but the having the discipline um, allows you to do whatever you want to do, basically. Yeah, right. And yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm completely messing that up. But it, the, and the key was, is that you know, like nobody wants to do this, but if you can have the discipline to do that and stay to your schedule and be committed to it, yeah. it was freedom. The term it was freedom. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it doesn't seem like it's, you know, like you don't, you don't have the freedom to kind of do what you want to do because you have all these things that you have to do, but because you do those things and you do yeah. them really well, in the, in the right amount of allotted time, in the right amount of, you know, focus and energy for that period of time, when you're in the best mode to do it, then what ends up happening is you have a lot more freedom. Yeah. Yeah. It's and it, During my career, I had a substantial amount of freedom. Yeah. And, and as a business owner, you know, I, I've struggled to maintain that level. It's not nearly the same as it was. And partially because you were still growing the business, but there's so many things that need to be done on any given day. Yeah. No, it's, as you say that, I'm actually, I'm thinking about, um, uh, parenting. So with Liam, uh, as you know, right, he's, he's 10 right now and we're working through the, the, the discipline on certain things, chores and schoolwork. And, and sure. in, in my mind, right. When I'm, when I'm trying to get him to understand as lovingly as possible is if you do the things you need to do now, right. Later, you can do the things you want to do. If you get the things that need to be done first, then they're not hanging over your head and you have the things that you want to do are more enjoyable later in the day. And it, it's a difficult lesson for kids, but now I'm thinking, man, this is a, that's an applicable lesson for adults, business owners, right? It's, <laughs> sometimes you want to focus on the fun stuff, the stuff that we enjoy, but the reality is sometimes you got to do the things that you don't want to do get them out of the way or prioritize them. And that frees you up to do things you enjoy more in your business. Right. So ironically, it was, uh, I think it was about three or four weeks ago. Um, no, it must have been two weeks ago. Somebody had mentioned to me, I, I told them about the podcast. You know, we're still trying to get subscribers. So I'm constantly telling people about our podcast. And they're saying, well, that's really great. How many, how many, uh, how long have you been doing it? I'm like, well, we're coming up on episode, episode 40. Yeah. And uh, which will be next week. Right. And I said, we're coming up on episode 40. So I said, it's been the better part of a year now. And he's like, wow, that's amazing. Because I heard that, you know, most podcasts don't get that past like five or 10 episodes or something like that. He's like, how were you able to do that? I'm like, it's real simple between my producer and I, we committed to doing it every Friday at two o'clock. That's, that's, yep. that's the game plan. That's how we do it. Right. It's like, yep. we have a certain time frame allotted and we do that. That's when we do it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, yeah. it's true. Right. And I, and I think that's, that's the key is, you know, and there's, 
there's days that I'm sure you're you're more or less excited based on the topic that we're talking about. But, <laughs> but the key is we do it right, and then and yeah. the work gets done, and we're disciplined in it. So yeah, yeah, and it was, and I think the other part of it too is it, it's uh, it is a passion project, right? It's yeah. something that I enjoy doing. I know it's, it's something you enjoy doing. And uh, and we get a lot of return from it. So the value is, is that, uh, you know, whatever that slotted time is that we commit to doing every time, it's not necessarily a chore. It doesn't feel right. like a chore. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. days to your point. I was like, yeah, it's a little bit tougher than it is, you know, this day. But yeah. generally speaking, uh, but the key is that we would not have achieved what we've achieved in uh, over 40 episodes if we hadn't had a disciplined, committed time that this totally. is the time and day that we're going to do it every day, every yeah. week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's hundred percent right. Um, well, I was gonna say uh, there are two two other things that came to mind as we were talking that'd be fun to, to break down. One is what I call time traps, and so maybe we start with that one. Um, and as you were talking about, you know, working on things that maybe you don't necessarily enjoy enjoy doing, but I also think there's things that business owners aren't good at, and it, it takes them two to three times longer to do something than it would have than it would take somebody else. So whether that's delegating or outsourcing or, you know, um, hiring a freelancer or whatever it is, there are certain things that you should not do with your time because how you do it or your skill set or whatever causes you to do it and, and waste time that could be done more efficiently by somebody else. So I don't know. Any thoughts on that one kind of time traps? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that the, um, well, and I, let me, let me back up a step. I think that the, First place to start is to make sure that you know what your time is worth. Oh, sure. Yeah. That that's probably, and I would say if if you asked anybody, I don't care if they're in the sales field, I don't care if they're in in uh in, you know operations, any, anybody who has a lot of control of their schedule based on what their production is, obviously business owners, uh, business development people, people in the sales category, all these people, they typically have a lot of flexibility in their scheduling. And, and how they use their time. Um, they're also typically some of the worst people about managing time. <laughs> um, sure. But uh, but in the ones that really that that um, that really get the best value are the ones that truly value and understand what their time is worth. Yeah. And and it's so there was an exercise the first time I went through. It was probably almost thirty years ago now. It was uh, it was an Earl Nightingale uh, program, and he actually went through the exercise, and he's like, you know, what do you make an hour? And he had you break it down and he says, OK, if, the, if you make so much money an hour, um, then then, you know, this is what your time is worth. And uh, I'm, I'm going to date myself, but I'm pretty sure that I was probably making about eight or nine bucks an hour at the time. Um, you already did with Earl, with Nightingale. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, Earl Nightingale, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the uh, the point of the exercise was to say, okay, well, if you were now the, the other thing we know about uh, our time is we typically only are doing what we get the most return on value of about a third of the time. Yeah, true. sometimes it's less than that, right? So, so theoretically, if your time is worth, let's say, say for the sake of argument, if your time is worth using today's numbers, I don't know, twenty bucks an hour. Well, if you can know that you, what you do is worth twenty dollars an hour, but when you do what you're paid to do, particularly, and again, we're talking about sales or something like that. Um, you know, if you know that your commissions and your sales and everything like that are really, um, let's say 50 bucks an hour, yeah, $50 an hour times 20, uh, 2000 hours a year is a hundred thousand dollar income, right? So yeah. you want to make a hundred thousand dollars real simple, do something that pays you 50 bucks an hour. Yeah. Uh, now people are like, well, how do you do that? Well, find a product that you sell that you get $150 in commission for every time you sell it. And, and if you do that a third of the time, right, if you close with a third of your sales and you're, you're doing marketing development all the time, you're going to make 150 bucks an hour times a third of your time, right? And then you're, you're going to make $100,000 a year. Yeah. Anyway, the point was, is that once you determine what that dollar amount is, let's say 150 bucks an hour, basically you go through your schedule and you only need to do this for one week and you'll have a very clear indication of how effective you are. But yeah. you do this for one week. You track every everything that you do in fifteen minute increments for the for literally seven days, including the weekend. At the end of the week, you add up all the time that you were actually producing at a rate that would qualify you to get one hundred fifty dollars an hour, meaning you were doing sales activity. Yeah. Right. And then you and then you back into that and you say, okay, well, you know, <laughs> so I'm only doing my sales activity ten hours a week, twelve hours a week, fifteen hours, whatever, whatever the number is. Yeah. Right. But the point is. Is that now you look at and say, okay, 
during this time to this time for this one hour, I was doing, I don't know, personal things, showering, shaving, using the restroom, you know, brushing my teeth, whatever. I was like, none of that was worth 150 bucks an hour. Yeah. Right. right? Um, and then I, and then I was pulling weeds in my yard and then I was, and then I was changing oil in my car and then I was doing this, I was doing this. And I'm like, wait a minute At, for $150 an hour. And I was pulling weeds. Could I have paid somebody to pull weeds for me? Right. Because that's, that's the kicker. That's where a lot of people get caught up, particularly people who are in, in ingrained with this idea. If you want it done right, do it yourself or heaven forbid, they're like, I'm trying to save money. So I'm going to have, I'm going to pay somebody else to do this. Well, if you knew that your time was worth $150 an hour, when you're actively doing the thing that you're good at, why on God's green earth would you ever do anything that wouldn't produce you $150 an hour when you could pay somebody a fraction of that to do that task? Yeah. You know, a good landscaper in, in Arizona, you know, Phoenix particularly goes for about, I don't know, 100, 150 bucks a month. Yeah. I should never have to pull weeds. I should never have to mow my lawn. I should never, if if I can make $150 an hour. Now, if I can only make $25 an hour, totally different story. But 150 bucks an hour and I can pay somebody 125, 150 bucks a month to, to pull weeds, no brainer. Yeah. Clean the house, you know, do lawn work, fix my own car. Now, if I enjoy doing that, that's a different story. That's a different right. conversation. Yeah, but yeah. generally speaking, if it's a task I don't like to do, which is kind of what you kind of hinted on, if I'm a business owner and I don't like doing the books, don't. Yeah. No, don't not do the books. <laughs> You're a bookkeeping firm. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but make sure that somebody is doing that. Somebody who's competent and enjoys doing the books, have them do the books yeah. because if you do it, you're not, one, you're not going to do it well. And two, you're, you're going to hate doing it. You're going to procrastinate it. And then when you finally do do it, you're never going to give it the time and energy that it needs to get done. Right. right. Yeah. Right. No, it, it, and it, you it, can do that with all your tasks. Yeah. As you were saying that two, two things came to mind and, and actually I got to give you credit, Eric, because this, the first time I ever encountered this concept was I was probably 20, maybe 21, maybe, maybe, I don't know if I was old enough to have a beer or not. But uh, <laughs> I remember you were doing a leadership development meeting and you were breaking this down for people. Um, I think it was around the context of, of delegation, but also, you know, when you're, when you're really optimizing your time, doing the things that drive results, it's amazing how much more results you, you produce. Right. But um, that was the first time I ever countered it. So I'll give you just a kudos on that. It's very life-changing for me. So I appreciate that. But I was thinking about two things. Uh, one is uh, uh, the movie, uh, Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith. Yep. So his character when he's when he's trying to make more calls, right? Because more calls equals yes. more, you know. Right. And so he's looking around, and he's like hanging up the phone. That's wasted time. They go to the water cool, and then they go to the bathroom. He's like wasted time. And so when you get that myopic about driving results that that you know generate revenue or you know whatever, um, it, it's crazy what that does to your productivity. So that was the first thing. And second thing was um, just you, you would you uh, give you kudos again was you would coach me on this. I don't even know if you remember this. This was years and years ago. And uh, I'd had a plumbing issue in our, our first house that we bought. Mm. And uh, I was trying to, you know, save money. And so I'm YouTubing, you know, how to sweat pipes together and all this stuff. And uh, eventually I ended up having to call the plumber. And, and it had taken me two days to do it wrong. It took him 20 minutes to do it right. And that included fixing the stuff that I screwed up. And so I just, I used that example. And I remember telling you about it. And you're like, remember that? What's your time work <laughs> exercise from years ago? Yeah. Do you think that was a good use of your time? And I'm just, no, you know, so it's just, it, it's so true. I mean, personally, but also within your own business, it's funny when you start to really apply that um, in, in a meaningful way, it, it does transform your results. So just don't, yeah. two, two kudos and then a movie reference for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate the kudos and yeah. you're right. I mean, that was um, when in the pursuit of happiness, that was a great example of, He's like, yeah, I realized that if I don't hang up the phone and I just push the button on the receiver, yeah. I can just dial again and I save, I don't know, eight seconds or whatever he yeah. said. And if I do this X number of times a day, and he was doing like a couple hundred dials a day. Yeah. If I do this so many times a day over the course of a week, it's an extra yeah. and I'm going to make an extra thousand callers or whatever ridiculous yeah. number it was. And right. And it's it, to your point, very few people take the time to get that myopic of really understanding efficiency right? right and 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 if we took the time to do that you know how much better how much more organized how much more this uh, how much more uh, effective could we be 
And yeah. and I really think you you said it earlier. You hit the nail on the head. The reality is, is we know we're not going to be perfect. Right. But if right. you're constantly striving to be better, the results that you're going to see are going to continue to expound. Right. And it's like when 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 I wrote the book, the goal setting book, a lot of it was based on the idea that I'm like, you know, I've done some pretty amazing things. If I kind of you know the the kickboxing championships and all the other things that I did, and people were like, how'd you find the time? I'm like, I didn't find the time. I didn't miraculously get more minutes in my day. Yeah. I just made sure I made that time for that thing. Yeah. Because that was important to me at that time. Yeah. And and that's that's the biggest, to your point, going way back to the very beginning, that's the most important thing about time management is the things that are, are important to you, if you really truly understand how important it is. And again, I, I, I like the idea of tying it back to if I knew I could produce 150, 250, 350, 500 bucks an hour. Um, when I'm in my, my, my genius mode, really, that's, yep. that, that's the, that's the key. You know, when I'm in my genius mode, um, you know, what is my time worth? And if my time is worth anything north of a hundred dollars an hour to do anything that is less than a hundred dollars an hour is, 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 is silly. Yeah. Right. Because, because you could delegate that. Um, and, and, and like I said, business owners are some of the, the most, um, staunch, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're so, they're so caught up in, you know, we don't want to spend the extra money. We don't want to do this. And and sometimes you have to, right. And sometimes you, you just got to suck it up and you got to get through it. But as soon as you can choose not to do that, um, you know, most, most, uh, business owners that are good salespeople, they should be spending their time selling clients, not trying yeah. to do the books. Well, and I, I think a good good example of this, and and I, I know you use kind of automated scheduling within your own business, but I think that's something that you and I talk to all sorts of business owners about is how much time is wasted, you know, doing phone based scheduling and texting and emailing, and I mean it's it, it not, not only that, but you lose business, right? We we talked a number of times about just the the first person to call back, right? That's who's going to get the business, and so right. if somebody can go onto your site and book an appointment and you don't have to take phone calls. And, you know, if you're going back to the plumber, right, if you had to stop and put the torch down and all that, and okay, I got yeah. to miss the call. I got to call them back and oh, they didn't answer because they moved to the next person. I mean, it's, it's so inefficient versus I'm going to keep focused on what I'm doing with no interruptions and know that all that other stuff is happening. It's being automated on the back end, And I just focus on what is actually driving my business results. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, it's funny on the um, when we first set up my calendar a couple of years ago, uh, you know, I, I was a little brash, but I put a I put a phrase on there that said, if you're scheduling an appointment with me, we've we've determined that my time is worth a thousand dollars an hour. And so we ask that if you need to reschedule, just communicate that with us. Yeah, because I know what my time is worth. And you know right. what? I don't get people that that cancel at the last minute. Right. <laughs> Right. I, I don't I don't I don't have people cancel the last minute. I don't have people take advantage of my schedule. If anything, I'm probably the bigger uh, abuser of the of the scenario because um, I'm trying to go from one place to the other. And I'm like, I'm, I'm spreading myself too thin as I'm still trying to grow the business. And and I'll recognize that I'm like, oh, I scheduled this as a Zoom call. Actually, here's the disconnect. I let the system schedule the Zoom call and I was physically in another location. So that's going to be tough to do while I'm driving. <laughs> so Eric, is this where we should talk about buffers between time blocks? Or Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what we're going to talk about. I need to build that into my uh, my calendar function. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think just uh, as I'm reflecting on different conversations we've had over the years around time management, I think one of the things that um, – you're great at challenging people on when they say they don't have time is you go to well, how much TV do you watch? Right. So I'd, right. I'd love to, I'd love to get your thoughts on that, Eric. I'll tee you up a little, but I know you've got some good <laughs> thoughts on that. Well, and I mean, it's, it's, you know, TV could be one of them. That, I mean, how many, how many different things do we do in a day that are mind sucks that are literally worthless mind sucks that we do because we, you know, don't have the discipline to break out of it. I'm, I'm no different. I have, a, you know, I've, I've been on a kick to play uh, solitaire recently for whatever <laughs> reason. Uh, but I do it while I'm working out. So while I'm on the treadmill, I'm playing solitaire. Uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, you know dead time with TV. It's it's any screen time, right? Yeah. Any screen time that's not productive time is wasted time. And there's not to say that you're going to be um, 
always working, always functioning, always in a high level of uh, you know operation. But um, you know, if you go back to uh, Eisenhower, the Eisenhower Matrix, right? And you, you you know what's 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 important, you know, um, and you break it all down. You know that you're going to spend a certain amount of time that is just you know mind numbing, you know, video game playing. Uh, Marvel TV movie watching, whatever that's you know, in entertainment, let's call yeah. it, you know, for lack of a better term, and that's even that is good, right? That yeah. there's a, what percentage of that yeah. is the key, yeah. Yeah. right? If 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 I'm doing that 10 20 percent of the time, I'm probably pretty productive, yeah. If I'm doing that 30 40 percent of the time, you're already pushing against 50 percent. I mean, as you you get over 50 percent, you're, you're already not productive. Right. Yeah, yeah. The average person, I would guess, is probably right around 50 percent of productivity. So anything over 50 percent, I literally had for the longest time when I was younger, I had a philosophy that you only needed to do about 10 percent more than everybody else. And you would literally separate yourself like light years from your competition. And and I still believe that to this day. I still honestly believe that if you're only ten percent better than than your, your the majority of your competition, you're, you're like you're 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 literally in the top ten percent by just being ten percent better, ten hmm. percent more efficient, ten percent more disciplined, ten percent more. And and everybody the you know people would challenge that, and I'd say, well, if everybody's at fifty percent and you're at sixty percent, if, if you know th- you're already that much better than everybody else, yeah. um, and everybody's ever going to be a hundred percent. Yeah, and it's a compounding effect as well. That's, yes, that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and if you um, you if you read um, uh, what's his name, um, Darren Hardy, right? The that you talk, he talks about the compounding effect and the one, and it, the whole concept of being one percent better all the time. It gets better, and over time, as you become, you know, you get wired into certain projects, you stay on that project longer, and you're more disciplined with staying with it, and then you see things through further. People who never see anything through, just it's 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 is it's as much discipline of managing the priorities as it's about making time for the priority. Yeah, no, that's true. And I think just um, in our culture and in the day and age we're in, right? Technology is such a big thing. And I just I tell people all the time, you know, phones have like digital well being on it now, where you can put limits on apps and Instagram, and TikTok, and all of that. And when you start to look at how much you're actually using those. Even if you don't think you use them a lot, you, you'll be shocked at the cumulative time spent every single day on those social apps. So that's just a, a, an additional tip or caution for people to think about. Uh, but as you're talking about time sucks, or I call them time vampires, similar thing, right? Uh, one of the things is actually people. And there are certain mm-hmm. people that are a drain on your time. I know that seems kind of harsh and insensitive, especially coming from me. I mean, if Eric said it, it'd be you know, normal, but coming you would from expect me, it from me. <laughs> <laughs> but coming from me, uh, but but there's people that you, you know it's going to be a long phone call or a lengthy interaction or those sorts of things. And so you have some options in those situations, right? You can limit those interactions. You can put boundaries on those interactions. You can have a frank conversation with them about, right? But but it's important to acknowledge that you're occasionally thrown off course, not by technology, not by, you know, bad scheduling, but by people that just suck your time, right? Whether it's distractions or they're just long-winded, right? So I, I think that's an important thing to talk about here. And there's a relational component of that that uh, can be difficult to manage. So just want to make sure people are aware of that and mindful of it. Yeah, it's a great point. And I, yeah, I would even... There, I would just add the idea that the um, there's not a role, uh, whether you're a business owner, or an executive, or you know, a manager role, or something like that. There's not a role that has a certain amount of responsibilities that that in a that that somebody has a job that they want to be doing. And I don't care who it is or where you are. If you're ambitious, you want to get ahead. You need to be able to take on more responsibility. If you're going to take on more responsibility, you're one of the first things you're going to have to learn how to do is manage people. Yeah. Right. And 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 we've talked extensively about leadership versus management and all that fun stuff, too. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, having conversations with people is a necessary skill set to get good at. Yeah. And more specifically, to your point, there are people that the like they avoid being coached by being the person that constantly approaches you and asks questions, menial, yeah. silly, 
yeah. un un unnecessary questions just to derail the impending yeah. conversation that needs to take place. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there, and there are people, there are people that, um, you know, they just, they don't, some people are intentional about it is what I meant to say. And then yeah. other people are unintentional. Right. And yeah. some people are completely unaware. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so, you know, but you, if you want to get ahead, you have to be able to recognize that. This is when now we're kind of talking about emotional intelligence, right? Yeah. You have to have the EQ to recognize that there are people who those people are and what, how they carry themselves and, um, you know, how they are disruptive or can be disruptive. And, and it, to your point, if you're trying to manage your time, you need to know who those people are and you have to have a process for managing that. In, yeah. in that relationship and and it will require difficult conversations it will require it to you to challenge people right and 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 uh you know it's like um uh there, there was a for years there was a there was a particular uh employee of mine that very personable very outgoing great guy i loved him uh but he had a tendency to you know tell a lot of stories all the yeah. time yeah. And and he'd get off on these tangents and these stories. And 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 one of the challenges was that as he did that, it was disruptive to the necessary coaching that was that needed to take right. place. Yeah. And he, he broke down the barrier of leader in his role and consequently made him too open yeah. to people. And so everything became a, a, a story or a conversation. It wasn't there wasn't enough effective coaching going on. And built too many friendly relationships that made it hard to hold people accountable. Yeah, and consequently, um, as good as a as a as a leader he could have been, he wasn't as good as he should have been because he struggled with that. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, that's uh, and that's a that's a prime example. As I said, anybody who wants to get ahead, you have to be able to manage people and and managing people. Uh, when it comes to time management, right, you have to make sure that you know who these people are and then have a process to 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 work through that and make sure that you have a a solution to, you know, cut somebody off if that's what's necessary yeah. to get, you know, to get your job done. And then that you also and I think that this is the key to it, David, because like just what you we talked about with task, it works with yeah. people as well. Sometimes I just need to sit down and just listen. Yeah. Yeah. I sure. can't have to find I can't say I've got, you know. 15 minutes, David, go. Um, sometimes I just need to sit down and listen to David. Yeah. And, right. and, and that might be an open dialogue for an hour. And I need to be a lot for that. But I can only do that if I'm disciplined with my time so that when I get to that opportunity, yeah. I can fully engage in it and embrace it and allow myself to absorb everything that can come out of that conversation. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. I mean, sometimes there is no better use of your time than investing in your people, right? Especially if your people are what's generating the bulk of your results. And, and that's, that's difficult for new leaders. I know, you know, you and I have worked with our fair share of, you know, young managers, first time managers and getting them to understand, like you need to spend time intentionally connecting and you need to schedule it going back to other things we've talked about and make it a yep. priority because, you know, sure. There's some days you may not want to have that one-on-one, -on -one, but you have to have that one-on-one -on -one and you have to have it consistently to get the results that you want. So couldn't agree more. Absolutely. So, well, I know we're running long. Um, you, you also brought up uh, other topics that we'll probably do emotional intelligence, feedback, <laughs> coaching, uh, kind of open Pandora's box there a little bit, but uh, yeah. a lot of awesome <laughs> topics coming up, but anything else on time management before we wrap up today, Eric? You know what we? I know we talked about delegation, but I'll, I'd be remiss to not mention. And I know you did briefly, you know, a little bit ago. But uh, you know, learning how to leverage all of the resources available to you when it comes to time management, um, a delegation is absolutely one of those tools that you can leverage. And and you know that looks different in different places and in different roles depending on who you are, where you are, and what your responsibilities are. But um, uh, using all the different levers that are available to you. Um, you know, we talked about the different tools you might use to manage your time, different practices you might use. You know, we didn't really get into the tactics, but you, you the Pomodoro principle where you do 25 minutes of work and a five minute break or, um, you know, the 80, 20 principle, the Pareto principle you know, where you spend, you know, you know, that 80 percent of your results come from 20 percent of your efforts. So you manage again, that's the priority thing. That's where the priorities come from. Um, you know, we I, I briefly referenced the the Eisenhower matrix. Right. And, and kind of knowing what. You know, and all that, all you really need to understand there again is priorities. 
Yeah. Get yeah. the most important priorities done first and don't let them become urgent, right? So it's all about urgent and important ta uh, ta tasks and responsibilities. And so there's tons of different tried and true principles, which is you alluded to in the very beginning of the call. And in that, in the show, I should say, and in, in that, when 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 we talk about those tried and true principles, it's, um, you know, we know that it's the application of those. And then it's the disciplined application over an extended period of time, which builds the habits, which then allows you and gives you the flexibility to, to um, you know, kind of to, to do things differently, I guess would be the best way to say it. But, you know, if, I, if I'm really regimented and I go, I'm going to use your analogy of going out six weeks. Yeah. And I start time blocking those certain things that I want to get done and I want to have time to do, whether it's working out or writing my book or uh, making time for for my family or whatever those things are. Right. Those are some of the big blocks that you really need to make sure you block out first. Put those in, in those spots and then filling it in with the other things that you know you need to do and then leaving yourself some time. And, and some of that is, you know, like we talked about some of the goof off time. Right. Just yeah. Block that in there, too, and make sure that that's accounted for. And then everything else just kind of uh, fillers in, fills in wherever it's supposed to fill in at. And, um, you know, by doing that, you you really control your destiny. You control the way that things get done. And if you're moving things forward because you're doing those big blocks every week and knocking them out, you're moving things on a regular basis every day, day in and day out. And, and I, I use the analogy all the time. If I did... I just got 1% better every day for 365 days, theoretically, I'd be 365% better. So let's just assume that you're, you're, you're half that, right? That's still almost a two X from where you are right now. Um, you know, like a, a, a double up, right. And more than a double up. So, um, you know, how much better would your productivity be? How much better would your sales productivity be? How much better would your, your efficiencies be if you just paid that much attention to, you know, what you're doing? Yeah. But most of us allow ourselves to get caught up in the nuances of our day to day lives, whether you're a business owner or you're an employee, it doesn't matter. We we get caught up in these nuances and then we excuse them away. Yeah. And that's probably the worst part of the whole thing is we excuse them away because, well, nobody has the time to do all this. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Is busy. Yeah, every, right. Every, well, and that's true. Everyone is busy. The difference is the ones who get things done, the top 10 percent, the top 20 percent they block that time out and they get those priorities done. Yeah. And that's, that's probably the biggest takeaway in this whole thing is if you get the priorities done, the other stuff will have a tendency to get itself resolved. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. The only thing I, I toss in there and I, I bring it up anytime I talk about time management, it's an, it's an old uh, Chinese proverb, but it's stuck with me in my whole career. And it's the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. Right. And I think that's, yeah that hopefully a wake up call for people that, you know, you, you can't change that. Maybe you've wasted time and have managed it poorly and haven't had priorities. You can't, you can't change it. You can't go backwards. Right. But what you can do is you can make a commitment to do better today, right? You're, you're 1% or more and, and start getting better every day. And you're not going to be exactly where you want to be, but a week, two weeks, four weeks, six weeks down the road, you can start putting all these things in practice and be that much better, but it doesn't happen unless you make the decision to start today. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and you'll be amazed in six months what it'll look like. Right? Totally. That's, that's, that's the key. It doesn't, take, yeah. it doesn't take long. It takes longer than a few days, but it doesn't yeah. take terribly long, a few weeks, even a few months. Yeah. And you can see some significant improvement. Yeah. You referenced the uh, Chinese proverbs. I'll, the last one I'll throw in there. I had it on my, on my email uh, signature for many years there. It was uh, time is a created thing. Mm. Nope. It was Sun, uh, it was at Sun Tzu. It was um, uh, Confucius. Confucius. Time is a created thing, right? Man, man created time, yeah. which means we determine how we spend our time, right? It, 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 time didn't exist. It was literally, you know, was the sun, right? <laughs> what were you going to accomplish before the sunset? Um, you know, we created time so that we could manage those increments. And, and consequently, uh, we're, we're in control of our time. So anybody who says anything other than that, they, they they're, they're misunderstand. Right. They have control of their time. They just need to take control, like you said, and then yeah. and execute on it for sure. Well, good stuff, man. Um, yeah. Great, great topic today. Uh, fun going unscripted again. It's almost becoming my new favorite format. So we'll have to keep playing with it. But, um, any anything you want to share about my biz coaches? Anything new or exciting going on over there before we wrap up? Yeah, we're uh, not, nothing new and exciting. I mean, we're, we're continuing to grow. We're having lots of big progress. I know it's, um, uh, you know, I, I know you and I are working on some marketing strategies, uh, concepts and, 
Uh, we're excited about the next evolution of my biz coaches. We've got some new coaches just recently joining us. Matter of fact, a couple of them are going to be sitting in on, on uh, client sessions to uh, get ready to hit the ground and, and awesome. get out there and engage with more clients. I've got uh, another interview in a couple of weeks with a new coach opportunity. So uh, excited to see the growth and, and, and do all the, um, um, it, 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 oh, I was going to mention uh, we had Andrew on the call a couple of weeks ago. He was in town with his wife, he and his wife, and oh, yeah. that, my, <laughs> my wife and I, we had dinner last night. Oh, awesome. And uh, yeah, and we were talking about, um, he was telling this story about the sleep um, study business yeah. that they built and everything like that. And so we were kind of talking through that, but uh, uh, excited to engage with him again because uh, we got some projects that we're talking about working on with him. Cool. No, that's awesome. So. Well, good stuff. Uh, this may be a little premature, Eric, but uh, before we started recording, we were talking about maybe offering up a time management workshop. So I just say, if you're interested in that, please let us know. Drop us a comment. We'd love to kind of gauge the uh, the interest in that, uh, especially send us your email. We'll let you know if and when it goes live, uh, but definitely let us know. Also, if you like the kind of content that uh, Eric and I put together, um, Eric has an awesome newsletter. So head over to mybizcoaches.com. Make sure you sign up for that. Tons of great um, you know, tips, tricks that he sends out on a weekly basis. It's a really good article. So definitely check that out. And uh, why not set up a free conversation with him or one of his coaches while you're there on the website too. Awesome. Appreciate yeah. that. Well, hey, Eric, it's been a blast. Uh, we will uh, talk to you on our next episode. And uh, for those watching, don't forget to subscribe. Awesome. Thank you. Bye.